Hey everybody, this is Franco, and today I want to make a short video and I want to talk about step rate and driver frequency and how that works with the Centroid Acorn board. So, when you bought your Centroid Acorn board, you might have looked at the specifications for it, and the specifications say that the maximum pulse rate for the Acorn board is 400 kilohertz. So what does that mean? Well, what it means is the Acorn board, and we can look at the wizard screen to see this, the maximum setting for the Acorn board is 400 kilohertz, or 400,000 steps per second. And just to give you a visual, what that, what that really relates to is 400,000 of these pulses per second. So this is the uh, waveform for the pulse output uh, displayed on an oscilloscope. And I want to thank my friend Joel for helping me get these. He uh, let me, he used his oscilloscope, hooked, hooked it up to an acorn board and we got these screenshots. So the max pulse rate for the acorn, 400,000 of these pulses per second. That, and that is really fast. The default setting for the acorn is 200,000 steps per second or 200 kilohertz. Now chances are most everybody when they installed their acorn picked 200,000 steps per second, it probably worked great, and you probably never thought about it ever again after that. And that's awesome. That's how it should work. That's, that's the way you want it to be. Uh, recently, I had kind of a strange, quirky problem with one of my lead shine drives, which uh, forced me to dive deeper into this. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. So, <clears throat> let's see here. Um, where do we want to start? So if, well, well I'll tell you about the problem I was having. The, the problem I was having is, let's just say, I jump into an MDI mode here and do a uh, G98, and then I'll do a G1 of W, I'll say 100 inches, and I'll give it a feed rate of, I'm going to pick something really low, like one inch per minute. And so what's happening here, my machine's moving at one inch per minute. Now I'm going to slow down the feed override to something ridiculous. So let's just imagine that. So I'm, I'm at 1% of one inch per minute, right? So I'm at this, re, this ridiculously low feed rate right now. Now what was happening, the display on my Centroid software was updating, but my physical axis motor stopped spinning. And it was a really, you know, weird thing. It was, so basically what was happening is I was losing steps, which I shouldn't be losing steps because I use all closed loop motors now. So this really, this really puzzled me. Now, Granted, this is sort of an unusual situation where you'd have a, 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 a very low feed rate and then override it to like 1%. But still, it happened, and uh, you know it's possible. So this is the scenario I ran into. Really low feed rate, then you know overridden to like 1%. The display on my screen was updating, but my motors were not physically turning, and I was losing steps. So that's a problem. So I had to fix it. So, what I did is I reached out to the Centroid people and explained to them my situation. And, uh, you know, they asked me to check all the basics. So I checked, you know, made sure my wizard was set to 200,000 steps per second. Um, I jumped into my manuals, and my lead shine manual said that my pulse input frequency could be 200,000 kilohertz. So that, that relates to 200,000 pulses per second. But I kept reading the manual and I came across this little note. Now this is next to the pulse input. And what it says, for reliable response, pulse width should be longer than 10 microseconds. So that got me thinking, like, huh, what does that mean? So. Let's just talk about pulse width. Pulse width is the elapsed time between the rising and falling edges of a single pulse. 
So if we jump into the pictures, and let me just pick one right here. What they're saying is the time between the rise and the fall, that's the pulse width. So that note, what it said was for reliable response, pulse width should be longer than 10 microseconds. So what they're saying is for reliable response, this duration should be longer than 10 microseconds. So that's kind of in conflict with what they're telling me up here with pulse input frequency. Up here they're saying pulse input frequency is 200 kilohertz, but then later in their documentation they're saying for reliable response it should be longer than 10 microseconds. So there's a little bit of a conflict in the instructions that came with my drives. So there it is, there's my problem. So basically what I need to do is I need to adjust the parameters in the centroid to make my pulse width longer. So once I kind of knew the issue, now I kind of was able to ask a better question. So the default settings in the wizard, you get two choices, 400,000 and 200,000 steps per second. As you lower the number of steps per second, what it does is, is it, it increases the duration of the pulse width. So fortunately, there's provision for this in the Centroid software. So the wizard's meant to keep your life simple. They don't want to give you too many choices. And for most people, the default of 200,000 is great. For my situation, I needed more choices. Inside of the Centroid software, there's parameter 968. And parameter 968 changes the frequency. So zero is 200,000. That's the default. The, the wizard gives you a choice of 200,000 and 400,000. Uh, but you can see here from the table, there's, there's other choices. So I want to, they, they recommended that I try 100,000. So I had to change parameter 968 from zero to 12. So this is a change that happens not in the wizard. This happens inside of the Centroid software itself. So you have to be very careful. The, if you use the wizard, that's like the happy path. That makes everything simple. It, once you go outside of the wizard, right, like you can mess things up. So you need to be extremely cautious when you're doing this. So when you go to setup, config, and I'm using the default password, parameters, and these are the parameters, and you keep going until you get to parameter 968. And that's it right there, parameter 968, I changed it to 12. But as you saw on the chart, there's other settings. So, you know, if I wanted to make it um, 20,000, you know, really slow it down, I would change it to 60. And all I would do is double click on it, 60, change it to 60, press uh, save, and now the uh, parameters changed. Now you really should shut down the software and power down your Acorn board, power it back up. You should, you really should do all that stuff to be safe. Uh, I'm not doing that right now for this purposes of this video. But that's how you change it. And the uh, information on this table, I'll paste this into the description of the video so you can uh, look at it easily. But these are the settings. These are the only settings you can use. They have to be these numbers. You can't make up like a number like 13. You can't put 13 in there and expect it to work right. It has to be these numbers. Uh, so just a point worth mentioning. So what happened? I um, changed my setting, parameter 968, I changed it to 12, and according to the chart, setting a 12 is a frequency of 100,000 or 100,000 steps per second, and that solved my problem. That made my drives work fine, and uh, I wanted to kind of visualize that. So here's here we here we go. Here's some pictures. So this is the waveform at 400,000 steps per second. You can see how short it is, right? It's like one and a quarter microseconds. Here is the waveform at 200,000. You can see that it's getting longer. It's uh, one, two, let's say two and a quarter microseconds. And here is the waveform at 100. Thousand steps per second, so it's one, two, three, four, five microseconds long. So that that seemed to work for my drives. That seemed to make all my problems go away. Um, 
just for the, the heck of it, I plotted out the setting of 20,000 kilohertz. Now this one, the scale is 5 microseconds, so this is really long. So it's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 microseconds. But you get the idea. You can use parameter 968 to change the duration of the pulse. And um, okay, so that pretty much solved my problem. While I was doing some research, I came across a few other interesting things, and that is parameter 39 and parameter 146. So parameter 146 is a really cool one. What it does is it sets the feed hold threshold. So normally your feed hold, uh, let's go back and command that move again in MDI. So normally, you know, you use your feed rate override, you can go all the way down to 1%, it tries to keep moving. But what you can do with parameter 146, let's go in and do that. Parameter 146. And it tells you feed hold threshold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make parameter 146.5. And now I'm going to go back to MDI. And watch what happens. So as I Once I get below 5, oh, look at that. Anything below 5% is a feed hold. Once I get over 5%, it starts moving again. Below 5% is a feed hold. So this is kind of a cool feature that I didn't know about, and I really like it, because when you're using an MPG, you can just use the knob to basically stop the machine, and then just turn the knob again, it'll start going. So that's kind of neat. And along with that, another little tidbit worth mentioning is parameter 39. This is feed rate override percentage limit. <clears throat> so the default is 200%. Uh, the, the, the virtual pendant, or uh, it will let you actually go up to 200% of your program feed rate. But sometimes that can be an issue, like especially if you're using open loop steppers. You, if you make them go too fast, they can lose steps. So you can use parameter 39 Let's go back into that. Parameter 39. You can change that to, let's just say, I don't know, 105%. And what it'll do, let's see, we'll see, it'll only go up to 105%. So it'll never let you go over 105%. So once again, that can be really good um, for uh, machines with open loop systems on them, or you know maybe other systems, you know closed loop, and you just don't want to go really fast. All right. Well, I hope you found this video interesting, and uh, if you're having some odd problems with your drivers, maybe this uh, change in the frequency or the, the step rate will help. And if nothing else. Maybe you learned a couple of uh, cool tricks, things that you can do here with your feed rate override. All right, well, thanks for watching. Have a great day and be safe.